In this video, we will discuss the calculations for the molar mass of a volatile liquid experiment. Information regarding the report will be discussed at the close of this video. We will see examples of the calculations you are to perform for this experiment. The numbers in this video come from data that I have collected for this experiment. For your data, the acetone numbers should be similar to your values but the unknown may be different depending on the unknown you chose. We will be calculating the molar mass of two volatile liquids. To accomplish this, we need the mass of the liquid and the corresponding number of moles. The mass will be determined by weighing an empty flask and then the same flask with condensed liquid in it and then taking the difference. The number of moles will be determined by first vaporizing the liquid and then calculating the number of moles using the ideal gas law. The first liquid we will look at is acetone. To calculate the mass of the acetone, we need to subtract the mass of the empty flask with cover from the mass of the flask and cover with the condensed acetone in it. In this example, the mass of the empty flask and cover was determined to be 89.888 grams and the mass of the flask with the cover and the acetone was 90.167 grams. Thus, the mass of the acetone is the mass of the flask and acetone minus the mass of the empty flask, or 90.167 grams minus 89.888 grams, giving a mass of acetone that is 0 0.279 grams. The next step is to calculate the moles of acetone vapor that were condensed. To do this, we will utilize the ideal gas law. The measurements that we need to calculate the value are atmospheric pressure, the volume of the flask, and the temperature of the boiling water. For the data that we're using, atmospheric pressure was recorded to be 0 0.9995 atm. The volume of the flask was measured to be 0.1511 liters, and the temperature of the boiling water was found to be 99.7 degrees Celsius. The first step is to convert the temperature to Kelvin. To do this, we take our temperature in Celsius and add 273.15. In this case, 99.7 plus 273.15 gives a value of 372.9 Kelvin. We are now in a position to calculate the number of moles of vapor. Recall that the ideal gas law can be rearranged to the form N, the number of moles, is equal to the pressure times the volume, all divided by the gas constant times the temperature. Or for our data, 0 0.9995 atm times 0 0.1511 liter divided by the product of 0 0.08206 liter atmosphere per mole kelvin times 372.9 kelvin. This gives a value of the number of moles to be 4.935 times 10 to the negative 3 moles. Lastly, we can calculate the molar mass of acetone. The molar mass is defined to be the mass of the liquid divided by the corresponding number of moles, or m over n. For our example, this is equal to 0 0.279 grams divided by 4.935 times 10 to the negative third moles, which gives a molar mass of 56.5 grams per mole. At this point, we need a measure of how close our results are to the actual value and this measure is known as the percent error. The percent error is defined to be the measured value minus the true value all divided by the true value times 100 percent. In this equation, the measured value is the molar mass of acetone that you've determined and the true value is the known molar mass of acetone. We can look up the molar mass of acetone and find it to be 58.08 grams per mole. Therefore, the percent error in my result can be calculated as my value, 56.5 grams per mole, minus the true value, 58.08 grams per mole, divided by the true value, 
58.8 grams per mole times 100%. This gives a percent error of negative 2.7%. The fact that my result is less than the true value is the reason why the percent error is negative. A value that is higher than the true value will generate a positive percent error. We can now turn our attention to the unknown. The calculations for the unknown are almost identical to the acetone calculations. In the report guidelines, you will be presented with a list of potential unknown compounds for you to compare with. As with the acetone, to calculate the mass of unknown, we need to subtract the mass of the empty flask with cover from the mass of the flask with cover and the condensed liquid unknown. For our example, the mass of the empty flask with cover was determined to be 89.893 grams, and the mass of the flask with cover and the unknown was found to be 90.322 grams. Therefore, the mass of the unknown is equal to the mass of the flask and unknown minus the mass of the empty flask, or 90.322 grams minus 89.893 grams giving a mass of 0 0.429 grams. Again, we will use the ideal gas law to calculate the number of moles of unknown that are vaporized. The measurements we need, again, are the atmospheric pressure, the volume of the flask, and the temperature of the boiling water. Both the atmospheric pressure and the volume of the flask will remain constant. The temperature of the boiling water in this case was found to be 98.9 .9 degrees Celsius. As before, the first step is to convert the temperature to Kelvin by adding 273.15. Therefore, we get 98.9 plus 273.15 giving 372.1 Kelvin. We can now calculate the number of moles of unknown vapor. As before, N is equal to the product of the pressure times the volume divided by the product of the gas constant times the temperature, or 0 0.9995 atm times 0 0.1511 liters, all divided by 0 0.08206 liter atmosphere per mole kelvin times 372.1 kelvin. This determines our number of moles to be 4.946 times 10 to the negative third mole. And now we can calculate the molar mass of our unknown liquid. As before, the molar mass is equal to the mass of the liquid divided by the corresponding number of moles. For the unknown, we have 0 0.429 grams divided by 4.946 times 10 to the negative third moles, giving a molar mass of 86.7 grams per mole. Since we do not know what our unknown liquid is, we must first determine the candidate for the unknown to compare with. You will be given a list of potential candidates to select from. You will compare your results with the compound that has the molar mass closest to your measured value. For example, consider the list of candidates below. The measured molar mass for this liquid which was 86.7 grams per mole, is closest to cyclohexane, which has a molar mass of 84.16 grams per mole. We therefore assume that the unknown is cyclohexane. As with the acetone, we can now calculate the percent error in our results. As we saw, the molar mass of cyclohexane is 84.16 grams per mole. Therefore, the percent error in my results can be calculated as 86.7 grams per mole minus 84.16 grams per mole divided by 84.16 grams per mole times 100%, which gives a percent error of 3.0%. In this case, my result is greater than the true value, giving a positive percent error. Now we can discuss the report. In addition to this video, you will find several files posted on Canvas. These are the files that you will need to write your report. First are the report guidelines. These walk you through all of the calculations and the questions that you're expected to perform. 
Next is the data sheet. This is a fillable PDF. You will need to download the PDF and save it to your computer. Open the PDF using Adobe Acrobat, Microsoft Edge, or some other PDF program. You will then type in your data and the answers to the questions and save the PDF once again. The report will consist of the data sheet along with the answered questions and your sample calculations. You must show every calculation listed in the report guidelines in order to receive full credit. You can upload your calculations as a photo, but I recommend installing the Office Lens app on your phone. You can use this app to save a photo as a PDF for upload to Canvas. You will upload the data sheet and the calculations to Canvas. If you have any questions regarding these calculations or the report, please contact me as soon as possible.